This episode is brought to you by Ahrefs. The mission of How I Built It in 2022 is to help you create consistent content that generates more sales. And Ahrefs is the perfect tool to help you understand what content works best. Ahrefs is an all-in-one SEO tool set. It gives you the tools you need to rank your website in Google and get tons of search traffic. And now you can use their webmaster tools for free. As someone who often struggles with what kind of content to create, Ahrefs has been instrumental in increasing traffic to my site. Over the holidays, I had the best quarter for affiliate income because it showed me my most popular pages and topics. I was able to optimize and update accordingly. Their webmaster tools are made for small website owners. They can connect to your website through Google Search Console, and that gets you site audits, backlinks, and keywords data. If you create content, this is must-have data. You can see how it performs, what resonates with your audience, and then you can create more relevant content that drives leads and sales. Ahrefs is helping shape my 2022 content strategy. If you want to gain a following, improve traffic to your website, or make money, Ahrefs is the tool for you. And now it's free to use. Sign up at ahrefs.com slash A-W-T. That's A-H-R-E-F-S dot com slash A-W-T. Did I mention it's free? Thanks so much to Ahrefs for supporting How I Built It. More and more, we're hearing why businesses should be on TikTok. As a creator, this can be a new place for you to gain an audience, if you do it right. And today's guest, Alex Rossman, knows a thing or two about TikTok. His agency, Rossman Media, is currently moving many of his B2B clients to the platform and with great success. Today, Alex will tell you why you should be there and how to make the most of being on the platform. From building community to generating more leads. In Build Something More, we talk about what it's like being a musician. We both happen to play the drums. What it's like writing songs. And there's a heavy dose of the Beatles in there too. It's one of my favorite Build Something Mores. And... This was a fantastic conversation for me. Uh, Alex helped me reframe my TikTok strategy after talking to Rebecca Simon last year. By the way, this episode is brought to you by Ahrefs, Text Expander, and Nexus. You can learn about them and get all of the show notes over at howibuilt.it slash 252. But for now, let's get into the intro and then the interview. Hey, everybody, and welcome to How I Built It, the podcast that helps small business owners create engaging content that drives sales. Each week, I talk about how you can build good content faster to increase revenue and establish yourself as an authority. I'm your host, Joe Casabona. Now let's get to it. Want to know the best way to get new episodes, top takeaways, and other tips, tools, and tricks to become a more consistent creator? Sign up for Build Something Weekly. It's totally free, totally weekly, and it will provide you the resources you need to build good content and drive sales. On top of having these episodes delivered straight to your inbox, you'll get some quick thoughts, recommendations, and a content roundup. The perfect way to start your week. You can sign up for free at howibuilt.it slash subscribe. That's howibuilt.it slash subscribe to get my free weekly newsletter. Alex, how are you doing today? Good, Joe. Thanks so much for having me. I love love these kind of conversations because I know that it, uh, you've been obviously dabbling in the TikTok world, so you'll have some, uh, some recent experience that we can kind of go off of as well, which I think will be applicable to all your listeners. So very excited. Yeah, my pleasure. And thanks for coming on the show. TikTok is the first time I heard about TikTok. It was from uh, my babysitter, uh, my my kid's babysitter. Uh, she was um, <laughs> sounds about uh, right. <laughs> yeah, right. She was a senior in high school at the time, and she was saying a lot of things I don't understand. Um, like I'm vibing with that and things. But then she brought up TikTok, and I I downloaded it and I tried it for like five minutes, and then it scared and confused me. 
uh, and then I stopped using it. And then there's there's been a consistent thread about if you're a small business owner, you need to be on TikTok. Um, yeah. And clearly, this is something that you have uh, kind of built your business on. And so um, I've seen lots of people have great success with it. So I'm excited to talk to you about yeah. this. But, but first, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So I am the owner of Rossman Media. We've been in business for about six years and really our bread and butter is social media. So taking brands and really distributing their content to their audience that's uh, applicable to each platform, right? So whether it's Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, we really have a team built in place that can facilitate that from the content creation, which I know you know a lot about, um, to the actual paid component as well. So helping really push that brand out there with some some paid component behind it. Um, and then TikTok is really, really like seeing just a huge acceleration over the last year, year and a half, especially for our clients. So we're actually in process of really moving a lot of consumer-based brands as well as B2B kind of service brands over to TikTok. And we get a lot of the same type of questions that I'm sure you're coming across, which is like, is TikTok the right platform for me, especially if you're a B2B company? And so we found very quickly that it certainly is. Yeah, that's that's amazing, right? So, so um, you've been in business for six years. So if I do my math right, that's 2016. Um, yep. And so I know a lot of people who kind of started social media businesses are kind of around Twitter, right? I feel like um, maybe this is just feeling, but like Twitter seems like the first really like businessy, viable social mm. network, right? Facebook was still yep. kind of like for college kids, more or less. <laughs> um, but brands could really make an impact on on Twitter. And then, of course, we've seen Facebook kind of move in that direction. Um, when mm-hmm. Snapchat came out, Snapchat was used for things that I'm sure Snapchat wasn't originally meant to be used for. <laughs> um, and then a lot of businesses got on that as well. So we, we've seen this, this evolution. I feel like a, a new social network launches. It takes advantage of some medium, right? Where Facebook, it was like the web and then Twitter. I think it was supposed to mostly be texting, right? That's why it was 140 characters. Yep. Uh, Instagram was photos, Snapchat, and then now TikTok is, is really has taken it to the next level with like video. Yeah. Um, but what, I guess, I guess the question in all of that is how do you know when it's a good time to move to a social network? Yeah. Great, great question. So, what we've seen is it's about demand, right? So where are people migrating to to get their information? Um, whether it's applicable to what they like or just something that's entertaining or a brand that they may like and follow. So it's our whole philosophy is you want to be where everybody is and where they're going. You don't want to be kind of stagnant in a platform that may not be serving you for the long term. Because as we all know, social media, as you just mentioned, changes constantly. There's new platforms. I will say though, TikTok is one of those platforms that actually has accelerated a lot faster. I mean, usually like as you've seen with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, they've been around for a while. We haven't seen too many kind of competitors come in and really kind of, you know, start moving away some of their user base over to, you know, this new platform, which is TikTok. And so, you know, our whole philosophy, as I mentioned, is you want to go where the people are and you want to be able to establish your brand in a way that's authentic, um, that tells your story, because really that's what people are gravitating to. I mean, you look at Instagram, you know, it started out with, you know, a lot of photographers with super polished photos yeah. kind of showcasing their catalog. Now it's kind of reverting back to very raw user generated content that can really just be shot from, you know, your smartphone. Um, And that's really what people are gravitating towards. So it's very interesting. We're taking some of these major brands like the Airbnbs of the world and Saks Fifth Avenue and some of our clients. And we're we're saying, hey, we're actually not going to create super polished productions like you've seen on Instagram, Facebook. Instead, we're going to really strip that down and we're going to start doing some very user generated content. And so that's, you know, that's kind of our focus is we want to take brands to where they're going to get the most exposure. 
Yeah, that's a really interesting point you make there, right? Because um, you're right, like TikTok, uh, not TikTok, Instagram was very like, uh, ironically, like Tom from MySpace had a pretty good following on <laughs> on Instagram, right? Because he took like these incredible photos. Um, yep. But I mean, with Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok, with more people getting more capable phones, um, and then of course you have like this, like m- a more connection with celebrities, right? People do want that kind of real, that real feeling, authentic. Um, I'm really getting a look into their life, sort of thing, right? Totally, it's like, totally. Like a, it's like reality TV 2.0, which that's less scripted. <laughs> that's a really good way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah. Like I, I, I feel like. You know, the audience has been so, and I say the audience, I mean, really everybody that consumes social media has been thrown so many like super salesy, polished ads and things like that. And they're starting to be very, you know, conscious and um, intentional about the brands that they engage with, right? Because, you know, they, they want to feel like they're, you know, being a part of a brand that's authentic, that is sustainable, that's, you know, conscious about what's going on in the rest of the world. And a lot of that is done through just interpersonal relationships that are developed through social media, which is just, again, the new wave. And, you know, it's, it is very raw. I mean, even some of our B2B clients that are moving over to TikTok, a lot of it is showcasing what their customers are saying about their brand and doing it in a way that's super authentic. Sometimes we just tell our clients to have their their customers just do like a, a face-to-face, you know, video with their their iPhone and, and say, hey, we had a great experience with Joe and, you know, this is kind of the experience we had. And it just, it, it personalizes the brands we work with and it makes it far more authentic is the really the best way to put it. So I think that's what we're starting to see is users are kind of gravitating towards the TikTok type of content. Yeah, yeah, I I like that. I think it's it's a uh, a really good point, really interesting. Um I am currently I probably should have had this ready already. Um but um he, uh, Brittany Lynn who connected us. She's like one of my favorite people. Uh she comes up on yeah, on the show great. a lot. Yeah, she um she mentioned uh, that you saw some uh, maybe like viral success, right? Uh, you, you so you're a musician first, right? Well, uh, like you, I am. Uh, what instrument do you play? Or instruments? Oh man, I play uh, guitar, piano, drums, uh, ukulele, <laughs> banjo. Nice. I sing. Um, so I, I've done it really all, and that's actually how I got started. Was um, really in the music world, I, I was touring and creating, you know, music for other large uh, uh, musicians and labels. And so that's really kind of how I got started. And a lot of it was kind of doing my own marketing, my own PR, which I'm sure you're very familiar with is, you know, just building your own personal brand. And so took that and realized that, you know, and I still do a ton of songwriting and that, that'll that never leave. But, um, you know, I've created something where I can kind of mesh both of the worlds, right? A lot of my job at Rossman Media is creative. A lot of it is marketing. A lot of it is PR. And so I feel like I've been able to kind of find a good good medium. Yeah, that's awesome. Actually, maybe we could talk about that and build something more uh, because I sure. also, I play the drums uh, and I am nice. uh, currently uh, doing Ringo Starr's Masterclass. Uh, it's, right on. And it's like yes. so good. Like he just like, we we could talk about it and build something more, but the fact that you just listed a bunch of instruments made me think of a quote from it where Ringo, like in like the first five minutes of the course, basically, he just goes, you know, and, and Paul could play any instrument. And I'm like, he didn't say Paul McCartney. Like he just said, everybody knew who he <laughs> like meant Paul, when he on. said Paul. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I just thought that was funny, but yeah, maybe we could talk about that and um, like the songwriting process. Cause that like true musicians that, right there for sure though, yeah. that, that must be a great masterclass because Ringo and the rest of the Beatles were just oh, next level in uh, terms of their musicianship and all the instruments that they experimented with and all their albums. And yeah, super yeah. cool. Uh, it's unbelievable. We'll do this quick sidebar and then we'll get back to the TikTok yes. conversation. Sure. But um, because uh, as we record this, um, the, the documentary on, on Disney plus, 
came out. And so I'm working my way through that. I can't watch anything for a long time in the sitting because I have small children. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but just watching them write music together is, is such an interesting thing. So yeah. I'll, I'll be excited to kind of talk about that. It's, it's something I don't know anything, you know, I just kind of play along with, with my playlists and, yep. um, and stuff like that. But it's really interesting. And yeah, the master class is great. Like Ringo has been playing the drums for like over 60 years now. Crazy. And just like the joy that he gets still from, is it over? Maybe it's over 40. The over 60 sounds like a really long time. Um, <laughs> could be. Yeah, I guess it could be, right? If he started playing in, in the 50s. Um, but uh, he just still gets like so much joy talking about it. Just like mm-hmm. everybody should find that thing. Totally. That that brings them that much joy, even after we'll say fifty years. Just totally. in case I did my math wrong. So, and even if you're not like a Ringo star, right? Which I don't think many of us are in the sense yeah, right. where <laughs> built a just a, a, a just a totally desirable, amazing career. But like, I totally agree with you, Joe. That everyone should have something that they can always turn to that'll just bring so much joy to them. And right, like, it's not always your day-to-day job. It's not, right? Like, obviously that's ideal if there's parts of it that are, but if you can have an outlet for something that you just really enjoy, that you know that you can just kind of block out everything in the rest of your life and just focus on that and just, you know, I'm kind of like that with my music still. I have a piano that's just sitting in our living room and I'll just, you know, end of the day, just go and cut out for like 30, 45 minutes and just start jamming. You know, so I I highly recommend it. This episode is brought to you by Text Expander. What can you do with more hours every month? Repetitive typing, little mistakes, searching for answers. They're all taking precious time away from you and your team. With Text Expander, you can take it back so you can focus on what matters most in your business and with your content. In 2021, Text Expander saved me 34 typing hours alone. That doesn't even include the collective hours I would spend looking for old responses, links, resources, email addresses, code, and the dozens of other snippets and scripts I use. Talk about creating more efficiently. I even have full templates for blog posts and how I built it scripts. With Text Expander, you and your team can keep your message consistent, save time and be more productive, and be accurate every time. The way we work is changing rapidly. Make work happen wherever you are by saying more in less time and with less effort using Text Expander. In fact, I have Text Expander installed on my iPhone, and so I can quickly and easily respond to emails and texts with links and even full email messages. You will never need to copy paste repetitive responses again. With Text Expander, your knowledge will always be at your fingertips with a quick search or abbreviation. Here's how it works. Drop your commonly used content into a text expander snippet and give it an abbreviation. Share your snippet with your entire team. Just type a few characters to trigger your snippet and the content expands anywhere you type. It's that easy. And the best part? Text expander is available on Mac, Windows, Chrome, iPhone, and iPad. Show listeners get 20% off their first year. Visit textexpander.com slash podcast to learn more and sign up. Your time depends on it. That's textexpander.com slash podcast. Thanks so much to Text Expander for sponsoring How I Built It. Kind of bringing it back, right? Um, you saw some viral success because you covered a Chainsmoker song and then they saw it. Is that is that right? Yeah, so one of their big songs uh, several years back was Roses. I don't know if you remember that one. And so I basically did an acoustic rendition of it. It was actually me and a couple other bandmates. And we were uh, basically created this video. I recorded the acoustics and we had a trumpet do part of the riff and things like that. So it's kind of cool. And we shot the video in uh, San Diego on the boardwalk. And so we created this really cool kind of like black and white video and we shared it with their management just say hey we were inspired by the song and 
and here's what I put together. And before I knew it, next day, like literally my phone broke because of all the notifications. <laughs> I didn't realize I had like all the notifications on uh, from yeah. Facebook to Instagram. And so it was just like, ding, 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 ding. And I'm like, what's going on? And so I ended up going into work that day. I was working at um, like a big payroll company, very corporate job. But <laughs> all of my my friends there like came up to me and they're like, uh, do you know that your video is on the Chainsmokers Facebook page and it's going viral? I think it already has like 3 million views like in 24 hours. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I actually did not know that it was going viral. And so it it was great because it got me introduced to that group. You know, we started to kind of keep in contact and, you know, do some songwriting stuff. So, you know, it's it was a very, very cool experience to see, you know, your music kind of, really blossom and get out there, even if it is a cover, you know? So. Yeah. Super cool. It, it, was it like stressful? I feel like I'd be very stressed if I went viral. <laughs> I feel like so many people are going viral these days now with TikTok and stuff <laughs> that it's like, it's starting to become like normal. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I think it, it was just cool. Cause like when I went out in San Diego for like a period of time, like probably three weeks, you know, it's funny how like viral videos last for like such a short time, but yeah, long story short, you know, I would go out and everyone's like, Oh, that's Rossi. He did the, the acoustic cover, like did some pictures and things like with people that were genuinely fans. I thought it was really cool. You know, I was like, Oh, this is great. You know, I love getting that exposure, but it's also a certain level of like, you know, a little bit of stress because people are coming up to you like, what are you going to do next? Is there, is there going to be a new cover? Like what's your next viral video? And I'm just like, Oh, uh, we'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. So, like that kind of, that kind of pressure, right. You it's always um, beyond. Yeah. Will from parachute. I don't know if you follow him on TikTok yeah. or Instagram, but yeah, you know, he was doing those like funny, like origin story TikToks mm-hmm. for a while. And I'm like, gosh, it must be really stressful. Cause I think like the, <laughs> I found him sure. through like the law and order one. Right. I think that was like the, the yeah. one that started it all. God, just Hilarious. And then like, I loved everyone he put on after that, but like, there are so many songs, but there's only like so many, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like, Mm -hmm. uh, when you go viral, if you put your, your, uh, if you put your, uh, pressure on yourself to, to keep doing that, you're going to end up, uh, kind of really, really stressed about it. And yeah, wondering. you got to have fun with it too. You know, you got to realize it's entertainment, right? Yeah. And I think that you're right though. When you do have a certain level of, you know, viewership and subscribers, you know, the you kind of do have to be very consistent, right? Like, you know, you've got to always be putting out content. You know, you can always be kind of identifying what's trending, what are new things that you can do yeah. to keep moving the needle. But yeah, it's it can be a lot when you start building that that following for sure. Yeah, thinking about YouTube because I've been doing a lot more of that and like being more intentional mm-hmm. about it lately. Um, yeah, you know, I spoke to a YouTube consultant who was basically like going through my channel and he was like, "If any of these videos um, went viral tomorrow, right, or like mm-hmm. made it to the featured page of YouTube tomorrow, would you be okay only making videos like this?" And I was like, oh, I don't know. He's like, if the, he's like, you got to look at them. And if the answer is no, you have to unlist them mm-hmm. because that's if very, you want to be very yeah. valid, just very valid. So it's, you know, it's, it's tough. And, and, um, mm-hmm. really, I, you know, I look at like Mr. Beast, right. He like, he has like, so like a, basically a, like a factory for, for thumbnails and he puts like so much time and effort into them. And yep. Just I, wild. I know. It is wild. And, and it's exactly like you said, or I guess your consultant said is, you know, people latch on to what they think you are, or at least what they think you are through the videos you create, right? So that that brand element is de- definitely there even for personal, like, you know, public figures, you know? Um, and so it is it is kind of tricky because, you know, the sometimes the videos that go viral, you don't think those are the ones that are like either your best work or that may not be representative of who you are in, in, in its entirety. But once it's out there and it does go viral, you know, it's almost like the audience tells your story. The audience kind of expects, you know, more content similar to that. Yeah. Um, and I, you see a lot of that on TikTok, right? They've kind of, you know, they find their niche. They're like, I'm going to be the you know, the beer and wine advocate and I'm going to only do reviews of beer and wine or I'm going to, you know, it's like there's always, you know, you kind of find your niche. But I think that's a really, really good point. 
Yeah. And so that's really interesting, right? So as we talk about kind of um, getting your business on TikTok, right? Because I think a lot of people Mm -hmm. probably still view TikTok as like this thing that like teenagers and celebrities use to make dumb videos or whatever, right? Like Lion Field music, they're like these Italian musicians. Um, And I love their videos because it's usually like shaming food TikTok, which is something that I I secretly would love to do because I'm like, this this is like a crime. Um, (laughs) But, you know, looking at that, I wouldn't be like, ah, yes, this is, it's very obvious how I can help my business as a podcast consultant on TikTok. For sure. For sure. And, you know, it's, it's so interesting because I think a lot of people have that, you know, I wouldn't, I mean, somewhat of a misconception because it, it did, I mean, truthfully start out as very Gen Z focused, right? Just teenagers dancing in front of a camera. Like that's that's all that TikTok really was. Now it's starting to get far more versed in terms of the type of content, the type of creators. Um, you're starting to see a much broader age demographic as well. Certainly still skews younger, but you're starting to see some of these more, like you mentioned, some parody channels, um, especially some public figures that have gotten big on YouTube now are expanding over to TikTok and creating Mm -hmm. kind of more bite-sized content or repurposing, which I know we talked before we actually jumped on and started recording was repurposing content and kind of having that omni-channel approach, right? So if you're doing a podcast, it goes live on YouTube and then it goes on Instagram and you have all these kind of different specked out pieces of content and TikTok can be a great place for that. Um, So, you know, I'm just a huge proponent of try to diversify the outlets that you put your content, right? Because the reality is there, there is going to be a different audience on each of them, right? YouTube, very similar to TikTok, it's a video platform, but YouTube is more long form content, as you know, right? People are willing to sit in front of their computer screens and watch a 10, 20, 30 minute, even an hour Video, TikTok is, you know, 10 to 15 seconds. So there might be right. ways to take some audio bits of a longer piece and turn it into a TikTok con- piece of content. So, yeah. So, so that's yeah. actually a, a really great point, right? Is, is repurposing. Um, I tell my, uh, my clients and my members to, to do that where they can, right? You write a blog post, maybe record it as a podcast episode or whatever. Um, I've, I've kind of been, so I've been doing TikTok for a little bit. I'll have a link to my TikTok as well as everything we talk about in the show notes over at howibuilt.it slash 252. Um, but I've been putting my TikTok on my video, on TikTok, on Instagram reels and on YouTube mm-hmm. shorts. I've been doing YouTube shorts a little less lately because they do way better than my actual videos, but like, I don't want them like messing up my analytics because they don't really count (laughs) for much on, on YouTube yet. Um, Right. How important is it when you're thinking about repurposing uh, to think about the platform, I guess. So like, can I just like put a, put a, an audiogram of this podcast on TikTok and expect it to get like thousands of, of views? Great, great question. Um, and I actually, I think more so than ever before, it is important to consider the platform when creating content. I, I do. I think there's obviously ways to repurpose. Like your example, if you took some compelling audio bits of this you know, podcast and edited it into like a 15 second piece, you know, especially if it's motivational or has some component there, mm-hmm. absolutely. It, it can do well on TikTok. Um, you know, I think also... You know, one thing that's really big with TikTok, which I will say a lot of creators consider before they actually produce the content is what's trending. Like, is there a specific song that I could use and put my own spin on it? Is there a specific hashtag challenge I could leverage? The reason that they're doing that is because the likelihood that that piece of content after they post it goes viral is much, much higher because TikTok is kind of a very community-driven platform where they want you to use their proprietary widgets. They want you to use their proprietary sounds and things like that. So I think it's really important, especially creating content on TikTok, just kind of see what other people are doing and put your own spin on it. Um, you know, obviously, if you can be a trendsetter and you can create that own trend, that more power to you. But to get started, I do think it's good to kind of piggyback off of what's what's trending and 
kind of putting your own spin on it. Yeah, and and that's really interesting, right? Because something I noticed on TikTok is that if you, if you watch, are they called TikToks, talks, videos? What's the what's the the terminology? TikTok video or yeah, okay. TikTok post. I mean, it's there. It's not a super, I would say, uh, familiar term yet for it. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> All right, so you see a video on TikTok. Um, and if you're watching it, right, you can like press like use this music, right? Or use this effect. Or right. when you're looking for music for your videos, you could see what's trending, right? And then this right. kind of creates like a directory of everything that's using that audio, right? So if people just want to- 100%. Sc- right? So like the thing that, I think the one that um, st- stood out most to me for a while was the, it was uh, like a group of kids dancing to that really slowed down like French- a uh, techno song where they were like dancing, like yep. swinging their arms back and forth, and a uh, bunch of people <laughs> just made that the background, and then it was like a success story, right? That they were dancing to. Yeah. That was like yep. my favorite one. But like I yeah. could have, I could have scrolled through those for hours because it was just so yeah. funny to me. Oh, hundred percent. And that's the, we we call it kind of the the black hole of TikTok. You just start mm. scrolling through all these videos, and it, it like you can be there for too long. Um, but it's, that's, that's exactly right. I mean, and especially like you said, if you kind of gravitate towards a specific song, you know, they, they usually shows you all the videos that are, you know, populating with that specific audio. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's definitely, you know, very different, um, in terms of the, the type of social platform it is compared to anything else that we've seen so far because of those reasons. This episode is brought to you by Store Builder from Nexus. Look, when it comes to setting up an e-commerce site, you have a choice between an easy but limited platform or you have an open platform with limitless possibilities, which requires limitless time to learn and manage. Until now. Store Builder is e-commerce made easy for everybody. Whether you're just getting started or you're an e-commerce expert, Store Builder by Nexus saves you time and delivers a storefront that lets you get to business. As someone who set up multiple e-commerce sites, I can tell you that Store Builder has been a much easier experience than anything else I've tried. Here's how it works. Answer a few questions, build your homepage, add your content, and you're ready to sell. No more hunting for the right plugins or perfect theme. You also don't need to be a developer to get going. Kickstart your online store with your optimized homepage that's ready for content and customization. Store Builder was created and is supported by the e-commerce experts at Nexus. So with the power of Nexus managed WooCommerce behind your online store, you can count on all the speed, security, and support you need anytime, every day. As someone who's had his membership site on Nexus for a long time, I can tell you I have been incredibly happy to know that Nexus is supporting my business. Whether you're a small business owner looking to get up and running fast or a creator who's looking for a place to earn some extra cash, Store Builder is for you. Head on over to howibuilt.it slash storebuilder for a special offer for How I Built It listeners only. That's howibuilt.it slash storebuilder, all one word. Launch your e-commerce site today. Thanks so much to Storebuilder and Nexus for sponsoring the show. When I think about TikTok versus what I'm more familiar with, like Twitter, right? Like they say on mm-hmm. Twitter, like 80% of your tweets should be helpful and 20 should be salesy or whatever, right? Yep. Um so like your self-promotional, maybe not salesy. On Facebook, yeah. right? You have like the Facebook groups and you can promote your stuff there, Facebook pages mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, and like the same thing with Instagram, right? Link in my profile or like now Absolutely. finally Instagram has added like the link sticker. So I don't have to say link in my profile and stories anymore, which is amazing. Um, you said, as you mentioned, TikTok is very Gen Z focused. I feel mm-hmm. like Gen Z is is not a big fan of being sold to, or maybe not yet. Like I guess Gen Z, Mm -hmm. I'm an elder millennial. Um, so, uh, it's, uh, I'm not, I only really know the, the, the generation from like teaching college classes and stuff like that. But, um, Mm -hmm. if I'm going on TikTok intentionally for my business, um, 
when, like, how much should I reel it in and, and be helpful versus when, like, would it have yeah. been okay for me to promote my Black Friday sale? Or is that like frowned mm-hmm. upon? It's a great question. Um, very little sales, like that percentage, I think you use like an 80, 20 um, on Twitter. I, I think that's more like, 95, five, mm-hmm. um, you know, less kind of self-promotional. I think what we're seeing now is, you know, content creators are being very like kind of intentional with how they use TikTok. Um, you know, especially if they are going to be promote, if they're promoting a product or service, they're intentional with how they do it because, you know, like you mentioned Instagram, Hey, link in my bio or things like that. It's kind of frowned upon on TikTok, honestly. I think that there's there's ways now that we've seen, which is kind of cool, where you can, you know, create kind of buttons that live within the video, whether mm-hmm. it's a tag to a product catalog or a landing page. And you can just kind of include that um, within the video. And it's it's called a Spark ad. So it's actually, you, you put money behind it um, and, and kind of boost it out there. Um, you don't have to. There's, there's ways you can kind of put buttons there without the paid component. But we're seeing kind of more towards that versus like very uh, directly saying, hey, this is what I'm promoting. It's more mm-hmm. so like, here's a little button, you know, click it gotcha. uh, type deal. Yeah. Gotcha. And so um, in an earlier episode, I'll link to that in the show notes as well. Um, I interviewed uh, Rochelle Moulton. She wrote The Authority Code. Uh, we had a great conversation about what it's like to become an authority. And we talked about the importance of publishing. Um, right. Right. Is maybe maybe TikTok is just a way for you to publish and be generous and and even without the mm-hmm. call to action, you know, is it is it possible to convert people who are watching your videos? You know, is it? I yeah. think if if you convert to a business account, right, you can include like a link in mm-hmm. your profile. Is that yeah. good enough? Is that? Great question. So, you know, a lot of our process when we're bringing on B2B clients is we focus on community building first. And what that is, is building your following, building your engagement. So doing a lot of content that really has no sales component at all. It's really just giving relevant pieces of content uh, based on whatever industry or niche you're in. Then after typically, you know, 90 to 180 days, that's kind of when we see things really building in terms of, you know, follower growth and engagement. Then I believe you've built enough of an audience to where if you did run like retargeted ads or you did run some sort of promotion, the likelihood that somebody is going to purchase from you or make some sort of buying decision is much, much greater. So again, if you focus on building that community for a good period of time, then you can kind of transition a little bit more to feeding some more promotional content. Love that. Um, And I mean, it's, it kind of goes to a a thread that's been in this show as long as this show has existed, um, which is back in 2016, right? This Mm -hmm. overnight success is not really overnight success, right? You need to sow the seeds and be patient. Um, oh, yeah. So you, you said 90 to 180 days. Is that of publishing on TikTok daily? Or is that like publish <laughs> as you're most comfortable with and like yeah. interact, maybe comment on other TikToks? Like what, what's, yeah. is it like 90 straight days of publishing? Great, great question. Yeah, and it, it's it's so funny because we see that a brand, whether it's a business or if it's a personal brand, is posting very frequently over that period of time. We're talking, we even have some clients that are doing like five posts a day on TikTok, right? Sometimes wow. even more. And they're doing it very, very, very consistently. So that time frame of 90 to 180 days sometimes can be consolidated to 30, 60. Um, so it, it's, you know, I'm still a proponent of, you know, intentional content. You don't want to just put a bunch of garbage out there because that also realistically, that's going to make your brand look less appealing. It's going to kind of look like you're very thirsty to, you know, get followers and things like that. Mm -hmm. However, I do think that the more you post the frequency on TikTok, at least right now, is pretty important. Um, So consistency in content uh, is key. Um, Again, I think the the beauty of it is because it is bite-sized content. It doesn't require a lot of production value or things like that. You can turn those around much faster. I'm glad you mentioned production value, right? Because one thing that I get hung up on and one thing that we talked about in the pre-show, right, was 
um, the sound quality. We wanted to make sure that your mic was dialed in so that you sound as right. good as possible. Um, my friend Alistair McDermott had an audio expert on his show, The Recognized Authority, where he said, uh, the, the expert basically said, your audio, um, uh, if even just 20% better audio, makes people uh, trust you more, right? You sound more professional. You sound better. Um, 100%. And so I get super hung up on that, especially when it comes to TikTok, which is mm -hmm. basically you're shooting a video and editing it on your phone in the app. Um, yep. I've like tested like lav mics, but like okay. if I get a thought while I'm on a walk, like I'm not going to have a lav mic with me all the time. <laughs> like that's just wild. Um, yep. So... So I have two questions. I have two threads here I want to pull at. And one is about yeah. the, the, the production value quality wise. And the second is around mm -hmm. batching. Uh, so I'm just going to plant the batching seed so yeah. that we can come back to it. But let's talk about the production value. When I record a TikTok yeah. video is like, I mean, I have the iPhone 13 Pro Max because I'm like a shell for Apple stuff. Um but is like your phone camera generally like your front facing phone camera and the built-in mm -hmm. microphone, is that usually good enough or do you recommend something else? Yeah, great question. So you're in the world where you're so right. Like audio is key. Whenever I'm listening to a podcast, like the voice is everything, you know, the music selection. I mean, all of that is so key, right? And sometimes when you're repurposing that for TikTok, you know, it is good to kind of keep that going, right? So you can bring in that audio, the same type of experience that, you know, somebody had just listening to you. What's interesting though, is the, the sounds and the things on TikTok that are being produced are just so bootleg is really the best way to put it. So like the best, you know, example I can use is bored in the house, bored in the house, bored, you know, that, that yeah. song that was like really big during <laughs> the start of the pandemic. That was yeah. just like, sh just on their, you know, phone notes, you know, that was recorded and it was, it just went completely viral. So it's like, you know, it, I think with TikTok, it's more about the concept of the content versus kind of the actual quality of that production. However, I have seen some, for example, musicians, that are really big with making sure they've got their music really dialed in. They've got, you know, their, um, you know, they've got kind of a boom mic for kind of more acoustics in the room. They've got, you know, a direct into their keyboard or whatever they're doing. So there's still an element of that. I think it kind of depends on who your audience is really and, and what type of content you're looking to produce. I, I would say for somebody doing podcasts, I think it would make a lot of sense to make sure you keep some of that production value, especially when it comes to audio. Gotcha. That's, that's super helpful. Right. And I, um, so I, I appreciate that, you know, maybe the best thing for me to do is hook up my phone here on my computer, record a bunch of videos and then mm -hmm. move them into TikTok. Right. And so 100%. now, awesome. Um, now let's talk about batching, right? You say some of these brands are maybe publishing five videos a day or five times a day. I suspect they're not just spur of the moment recording five videos uh, that they're like, oh, this would be good right. on TikTok. Let's just do this real quick. <laughs> um, so how do you balance like batching, scheduling out? How far do you schedule out? And what's the window for taking advantage of a trend, right? So like I yeah, could- great questions. I could make like 90 days worth of videos uh, and if I only publish those, I've probably missed every trend in those 90 days, right? <laughs> this is the golden question for sure. Um, you know, typically what we advise our clients is, you know, find a day a week or sometimes even we have like a shoot day every month where we block out, you know, four hours, sometimes longer, some different style and wardrobe changes, things like that, have all the, the shot lists and ideas in place based on trends for sure. Um, and, you know, usually that does well, right? We shoot as much content as we can. Then we go into editing, make sure we've got everything dialed in from that standpoint. And then we create kind of a schedule for that, that publishing usually, you know, sometimes even 30 days out. Now, a trend, like you mentioned, the lifespan is very volatile, right? Some last really long, like we've seen some that have really spanned to, you know, a year. And then we have wow. some that only last a week, maybe. <laughs> 
So yeah. it's it's interesting, and and I will say that um, you know there's ways to still like what we advise you know for our clients is at least block out like 20% of the content that you shoot that's more trendsetter, like stuff that you generally want to create that is true to your brand, what you want to promote versus just a bunch of trends. Like you want to have a, bl- a period of at least 20% of that content that's just kind of more trend setting than anything. Um, but, you know, you have to be strategic with the trends that you're using, right? Like if if you feel like kind of our golden rule is, if a trend has been kind of lasting for weeks prior to creating this content, it's probably good to to leverage that, right? If we're starting to see some momentum, we also have some analytics, which I know sounds super funny, but you can actually see how long, you know, a piece of audio or a hashtag challenge has been trending on TikTok. So if that duration of time is pretty long, usually that means that it's, it's pretty viable and it's still uh, a great option in terms of a trend to use. That's, that is really interesting. So you have analytics that kind of tell you, all right, this thing has been mm-hmm. trending for a week or this thing has been trending for like a month. Um, my, my question here, right, as a computer nerd is, you know, do these analytics tell you kind of what's on the upswing and what's on the downswing, right? So if yeah. it's like, I really want to do that, that dance video, that success dance, mm-hmm. I don't know what the official name was, but, um, you know, if I want to do that, but it's on the downswing, should I record it and put it out immediately? Or should I like forget about it because it's on the downswing or whatever? Right. And that's a great point. So TikTok's actually created their own like music charts, you know, very similar to like Billboard, right? Where you can see, you know, what the top hundred uh, songs or sounds are on TikTok and you can see how long they've been in that position, um, the type of performance in terms of how many pieces of content are using that video and for how long, uh, or excuse me, that that audio. So, you know, these type of analytics are really important to planning content for sure. And so we look at these all the time for our clients to kind of see what is the best approach. If there are some that are, those are actually the best, is the ones that are starting to really swing upwards. Like maybe they they just launched, but they're really creeping up day after day those are the best ones to jump on. Um, So yeah, I think that's a a really great point is just kind of diving into the weeds of the analytics a little bit and really kind of seeing what's working and what's not. That's really cool. And this is like something that I can just see as like a normal, barely, barely uh, alive TikTok user, right? Like I could just go and see what's on those charts and be like, oh, this one, that's super cool. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, feel it feels like there's probably a big business around TikTok analytics, or maybe it's just general social media analytics right now. For sure. And what's so interesting too, I I, I have to jump in. You know, coming from a, another musician, what's what's we're, I think was just kind of promising now is, you know, a lot of these like licensing deals and things like that are starting to really come to fruition a lot more now. For you know, it, it also means a lot of a lot of new artists are just coming in and out you know, pretty quickly, like, Hey, they had a viral song and then you don't hear about them, but there are a lot more, there's a lot more of that now, right? A lot of, honestly, the younger generation finding their music through TikTok. I know you and I had blogs that we would find our music on. We had, you know, all kinds of stuff, but TikTok starting to become like a a great channel for finding new music, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Wow. That is, that is really cool. Um, and so, Interesting to me. It's like, I mean, cause like, you know, I, I would, I'm 36 for, uh, to s- kind of set the bar. Right. So I discovered most of my music on, uh, on the radio. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. and then like eventually like whatever I pirated on Napster, I mean, downloaded <laughs> totally legitimately yep. on Napster. LimeWire, um, Napster. Yeah. yeah Bear share, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Um, and and then eventually, right, it was kind of like what was recommended on Apple iTunes back when it was mm-hmm. called iTunes or Spotify yep. now, which is really good for discovery. So kind of seeing yeah. it on on the social, on, on TikTok specifically is cool. Um, and then mm-hmm. you have people, the new generation of musicians who are getting discovered, right? Like like Katy Perry and, and uh, Soldier Boy were discovered on YouTube, right? Or Justin Bieber too. He, like they were yeah. discovered on YouTube. And um, I wonder who that first like big musician, if, I mean, maybe they already exist. Uh, yeah. Who gets discovered on TikTok, right? I know Nate, is it Nathan Evans, the Wellerman guy, the sea shanty guy? Mm. Um, Sounds familiar. Got a, got a, a record deal 
from that from that TikTok that he posted, mm-hmm. I guess, last year. Yep. And we're seeing a lot more of that. There was this, you know, uh, international band based out of Italy. That did like a big, Is it Maniskeen? Yeah, Maniskeen. Yeah. And they, they, they got pretty big, you know, overseas, you know, with a lot of their songs that um, went viral on TikTok. I think there was actually like two or three. One of them was a cover. But, um, you know, that's just a good example of, you know, on what level, you know, like they'll get to, I think with any band on TikTok is is still kind of unknown. I don't know if there's yet been like, like a total like pop star number one mm-hmm. type vibe yet, but um, definitely some, some new, new interesting bands popping up through there for sure. Yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll just, uh, I'll just say like, I love Maniskeen. I'm of Italian descent. So I am as uh, well. Oh, very nice. Um, yeah. And I've been trying to learn Italian so I could teach it to my kids. And listening to their songs in Italian has been a lot of fun. Oh, um, for sure. Cool. Uh, plus, they won uh, the Eurovision, right? And they didn't do an English speaking song, yeah. which is, I hear, from what I understand, that's rare. It is. It for sure is. And yeah, they're a cool band. I mean, they they kind of just bring back like the roots of rock and roll and um, they do it in, in really their own way. So, you know, and I will say a lot of their, you know, even in a recent interview they did, they contributed a lot of it to, at least internationally, to TikTok. Wow. Um, you know, I mean, like the Bagan song, I mean, that was, yeah, I mean, still is, it's been right. pretty massive uh, on TikTok. So, and sometimes it's, not intentional, right? Like I, I sometimes it's like, oh, a song that was really big like 20 years ago, like surfaces on TikTok, we're just like, what's that song? And it's like, well, I know what it is, but you know, like right. some young younger kids are like, what is this? This is cool. It's like, oh, yeah. it's Nirvana. Um, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So Oof, it's um, Nirvana. Gosh, Nirvana <laughs> is like 30 years old almost <laughs> at this point. And that's, that hurt me a little bit to come to that realization right now on, on this too. podcast. Yeah. I know. Whew. I know. Trust me. Yep. So um, <laughs> awesome. Well, this, uh, this has been such a great conversation just to kind of recap a little bit, you know, it's, um, I, it's, it's important for your business to be on TikTok. I think, uh, probably a good place to start, uh, if you mm-hmm. just want to try it out, right. Is, um, uh, repurpose content when you can kind of look at yep. what's trending and build that community. Um, yep. and then when it comes to production value, right. Uh, it, it depends on what you're trying to do. If I'm trying to help people podcast, mm-hmm. good audio will probably help, but, 100%. Um, but uh, you know, I think, I think we've gotten a lot of really good advice here. And so, um, lately I've been good. getting the same answer, uh, to my favorite question to ask, uh, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, do you have any trade secrets for us? Trade secrets. Um, I do. I have quite a bit, um, but I'll try to keep it to, I would say, the most uh, most value to your listeners. So, yeah. um, you know, TikTok, you know, I went through, you know, a couple of it, a couple of them here, but, you know, really the name of the game is, you know, you want to post as consistently as you can, right? Like if you can, you know, push out five pieces of content a day, you're going, like we literally have a statistic that one out of 10 videos that you post is going to go viral on TikTok. Like it's it's going to have some sort of viral component. Does it mean it's going to have 20 million views overnight? Maybe not, but you may get 10,000 views, right? So the, and I, I bring that up because it, it is very important and it is kind of a trade secret that that, you know, one in 10 is going to go viral. Yeah. If you think about that, the more you kind of continue to post, the more likely you are that you're going to have something really catch catch fire. Um, and so, you know, another thing to to really leverage, there's there's kind of two components of TikTok. There's the managed services component, and then there's kind of the, the do-it-yourself um, type platform within TikTok. Um, you know, do your best to try to work with either an agency or communicate directly with TikTok and try to get on managed services. What that will do, it will open you up to opportunities to potentially get involved with hashtag challenges at the brand level. It'll open up some access to their content creator network, which is now over 4 million content creators that you can kind of tap into to help promote your service. Oh, wow. Um, You'll have access to actual music producers that are hired by TikTok if you wanted to create your own audio. So we have some brands that are like, hey, we want to create our own 
like piece of music in time that we can have on TikTok, you'll have access access to that through the managed services platform. So we're we've been very fortunate. We're a TikTok agency partner, so we get to you know work directly with them on a corporate level. So all of our agency clients get a lot of benefit and value out of that. But that's kind of you know quick trade secret as it relates to TikTok. Wow, that's you know, really. Yeah, that's really incredible. I was I was blown away by the one out of 10 videos you post will have some sort of viral component. And then you just blew me away even further by talking about these managed <laughs> services. So like if you're if you still think that TikTok is just for like teenagers who are like mounting their phone on a, on their parents' car and then dancing in front of it. <laughs> like that's uh, that's maybe what it was, but that's not, that's, that's a real life thing that I saw where I was like, what is my neighbor's kid doing? This is the, <laughs> this is the TikTok. Um, that is but, what's happening. Yeah. But it's funny. Manage services and, and a whole sort of enterprise. So super cool. Yeah. I am, I feel like I have to have one of these conversations every few months. So I get energized about TikTok again, because it is, it's really cool seeing, you know, I, I had like my first one got like almost 2000 views, which I was like, again, blown away by because like my YouTube mm-hmm. videos get like 50 views. Um, so super, super cool yeah. to see that. Um, Alex, this has been such a great conversation. Um, if people want to learn more about you, where can they find you? Yeah, you can follow uh, me on Instagram. Uh, it's Rossi Live is my personal handle. And then Rossman Media is our business um, account that we do a post a ton of content there on Instagram. So I would highly recommend that. TikTok, we're still building out. You guys can go do the same thing at Rossman Media on TikTok. And then lastly, uh, you can go to rossmanmedia.com if you want to inquire about TikTok services or social media work that we do. And uh, you can see case studies, you can see uh, some of our client testimonials and go from there. But this has really been a pleasure and thanks so much for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on and for sharing so much of your knowledge here. Um, I will link to everything Alex just mentioned, as well as lots of stuff that we talked about, including a link to uh, some of my favorite Maniskeen songs um, over at the show notes on the show notes at how I built it slash 252 there you'll also be able to sign up for the build something club for just 50 bucks a year you can get ad free extended episodes of this podcast in today's build something more Alex and I will be talking about what it's like being a musician because it's something I'm very interested in as somebody who just dabbles in the drums Uh, but thank you so much for listening and until next time get out there and build something 